I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 110, Excite Bike 64. Released in 2000, this game was developed by Left Field Productions and published by Nintendo. I know Excite Bike is one of the more popular titles on the NES, but I did not know there was an entry for this series on the N64 before this challenge. I think it makes sense as this was the time period that extreme sports was gaining popularity with the rise of Tony Hawk and more people learning about the X Games. Now, compared to the NES, the devs had a lot more to work with, both in hardware and the controller itself. I don't consider Excite Bike to be one of the top games of the NES, but I do think it is one people remember quite fondly. So they had a lot to live up to with this game. Hopefully not too difficult. Let's get into it. The game offered a high res mode using the expansion pack which I decided to turn on. The main menu had season, exhibition, time trials, and special tracks. I'll get into the special tracks at the end, but the season is the main single player mode, so that's what I'll be doing to beat this game. It opens with a tutorial which was very welcome for me. Some of the controls were obvious. There's a turbo feature just like in the old one. If you overuse it, the engine will overheat. A thing I loved about this tutorial was it had tests to make sure you actually understood what was being explained. Some games will just tell you how to play and then just be like, yep, guess you got it. The turning is quite rough in my opinion. You have to press diagonal down and left or right to turn sharply rather than just left or right. It feels unnatural at first, but you get used to it. You can adjust how the bike is oriented in the air by pressing up or down on the joystick. You'll want to pull back when jumping to get more air, then tilt it forward to make the bike level with the downslope when landing. This is definitely the hardest thing to get used to, even after you've played a lot. The timing is quite strict. Tapping Z just before you go off a jump will perform a turbo boost, which is just a burst of speed to give you even more air. The timing is very strict. You can also drift in the air to preemptively turn the bike when landing. There's many skills that you need to master to beat this game. There's also a section on doing wheelies and mid-air tricks, but they don't really do anything to help with the races. It's just for swag, I guess. So after the tutorial was over, it was time to jump into the season. There are three difficulties, with only novice being unlocked to start. It showed that there were five races in the circuit, so let's do it. I had to choose my racer, which is a big moment for everyone playing this. There's Jumpin' Jim Rivers, Tricky Ricky Stern, Sarah Sugar Hill, Bobby Big Dog Malone, Nigel the Duke York, and Vicky the Vixen Steel. They all have different stats in landing, cornering, jumping, and turbo. And they all have cheesy quotes when you select them. I ended up going with Jumpin' Jim Rivers because he had completely balanced stats, so I feel it was good to learn the game. Going into the first race now, we're all at the starting line together. That's nice, it's actually fair. I hate those racing games where you're playing catch up the entire time. Being in high res mode, it put black bars on the top and bottom of the screen to make it a widescreen format, but it did noticeably increase the graphics. I didn't notice during the run, but on my last lap I overheated my engine. It essentially makes you come to a complete stop until it cools down, which really sucks. I ended up getting third place, which I guess is okay for my first ever race. The season is scored on a point system, with first through fourth getting 5, 3, 2, or 1 point respectively. I was sucking so bad on the second race, and I'd had about enough of that high res mode. I love how when you go to quit, it's like, really quit? Or, nah, just kidding. <laughs> Usually, I don't mind the lower FPS from high res, but the squish screen was quite annoying to me. The next time around, I got second place on the first race. A lot better. And the second attempt on the second race didn't go so well. Especially the part where I freaking died because a motorcycle landed on my neck. Someone arrest that person. I found the outdoor courses to be much harder than the indoor ones. I don't really know what exactly it was, but it just felt weird turning on them. Not to mention they're usually less well put together due to dealing with the wild terrain rather than a man-made track. The main cool thing about these outdoor ones though is they have alternate paths. It's nothing insane in something like Beetle Adventure Racing, but it's still nice to discover a shortcut here and there. I ended up getting second place in this one as well, putting me comfortably in second, but four points back from first. You have to get first place in the season to unlock the next round. 
On the next race, something weird happened. I was in first place, but there was still someone ahead of me. I thought maybe I was overlapping someone, but it didn't really make sense. Turns out the game has these things called drones that are just kind of like random NPCs that drive along the track with you and just get in the way. It's such a weird thing to me, although you are able to turn it off in settings. I ended up easily getting first on this race, then it was another outdoor race. These are just so much harder, man. One mechanic of the game is that you can perform takedowns by running into the other racer's back tire. It is completely unreliable though. I swear, it feels like the game just does a coin flip to decide which one of you crashes when you do it. Like most outdoor tracks, this one had a sneaky little shortcut at this wooden structure. I think I did it wrong though. I only got third place in this one, but I was somehow in first place in points. I just had to do decent on this final race to take the win. I'd say getting first is doing decent, right? It shows a little cutscene with the winner standing on a podium and says we unlock the next round. I thought it was cool how they included a modern version of the jingle from the NES game when you win the round. Oh listen! It was the original Excite Bike. Speaking of which, I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and music. The graphics were pretty decent, I thought, and the game runs smooth, as long as you aren't on the high res mode at least. Some of the textures sure could look a bit better, but I think it's good enough. The music's not too shabby either. None of it has lyrics, it's kinda like generic punk sounding music for the most part. By far though, the best part of the audio is the commentator. It's not like he has the most insightful commentary or anything like that. Actually, it's quite repetitive. The thing that's awesome is how excited he gets. I mean, just listen to this guy. It reminds me of that Scott Sterling video. He doesn't care what the other racers are doing at all, but Jumpin' Jim Rivers gets him so excited. <laughs> he doesn't get near as excited if he plays the other people though. It's almost as if he gets annoyed that he can't scream about Jumpin' Jim Rivers. Anyway, now that that's done, I had unlocked the silver round. It had another five races, and if I got first place on this circuit, I'd unlock the next difficulty. I decided to try out Tricky Ricky Stern for this one to see how different it felt. His stats were super high in everything except Turbo, which was awful. Honestly, the indoor tracks all feel the same, and they're incredibly repetitive. I feel like it's not worth showing them off too much. The outdoor ones were the ones that were actually interesting. Not to say indoor ones aren't fun, just they feel like the exact same thing, just rearranged. So this first outdoor track was called Canyon Chasm. It has a bunch of tunnels that were tricky to navigate through because if you so much as bump one of the walls, you're done for. There was also this part with back-to-back -back small hills. I just have no idea how to hit these efficiently. I never really got good at it throughout the entire playthrough. The end is the wildest thing though. There's just a sign that says dead end and I guess this is the chasm part from the track name. I used turbo and did a turbo boost, but I was nowhere near making it. Dead end! <laughs> How do you make that? I think Tricky Ricky Stern died. After the third race, I was in second place, down by two points. This led into another outdoor track, Congo Course. I don't know if it was in my head or it's actually like this, but the turning felt so impossible here. It was almost like the ground had oil spilled all over it, so it was just slippery everywhere. There was a secret tunnel near the end, but I unfortunately didn't discover it until the last lap. I took third place in this one, and the standings weren't looking too hot. I was down by five points, which, uh, yeah, it was impossible to win. I didn't even bother with the last race. Honestly, I think the main thing that went wrong with that run was the commentator wasn't screaming about Choppa Jim Rivers. <laughs> it just gets me hyped up, you know? I was doing decent going into the Congo course this time around, up by one point in first place. After some rough driving, I thought I was going to finish second, but Nigel the Duke York was kind of lollygagging at the line, so I won at the last second. Probably won't have any of that on a higher difficulty. I was up three points now, so I just had to get at least third place on the final race to win this one. Jumpin' Jim Rivers took second with ease, and I have now won the silver round. It shows the podium again saying I'd unlock the next difficulty, and I also unlocked soccer. That sure sounds interesting, but we'll get into that later. I'd unlock the amateur difficulty now. 
Only the first two cups are available on Novice. Annoyingly, I had to beat the bronze and silver rounds again. It's not too bad, but I'm sure the devs did it this way just to pad the playtime for some requirement they had to meet or something like that. Basically, I had to repeat those last two things I did, but now it's a bit harder. I did completely awful. But somehow, I still took first place in the Bronze Cup first try. No one really had any points. I found a cool shortcut in one of the tracks this time around too. If you go along the left side of that wooden structure, there's a series of jumps that lead to a secret path above it. You get quite an advantage using this because there's no scary turns or ramps to deal with. It makes the track a lot more manageable. At the end of the Silver Cup, I was tied for first with 18 points. It showed the cutscene with me on top of the podium, and I was expecting to unlock the gold round. That wasn't the case though, so turns out ties don't count. Dang it, man. I decided to try playing as Nigel the Duke York to get this win. His stats are all bad, but his turbo stat is maxed out. This means you can essentially hold turbo the entire race. So now it was on to the gold round with five tracks to tear up. The game was starting to feel quite a bit harder. Like this first indoor track was just littered with hairpin turns. They were so hard for me. My current strat to handle these was to slow down aggressively and try to take the turn on the inside. In my head this made sense because I have to travel less distance, but it doesn't work well in practice. Despite this, I was able to take first place on the first try. The first outdoor track here is Rainforest Run. It's similar in look to the Congo course, but it's much harder. Plus it's raining and has lightning strikes constantly. The screen flashing so annoying. Now, I struggled quite a lot here. I feel like the game makes the ground more slick due to the rain, but it's also just the layout of the track that makes it hard. You build up so much speed with these huge jumps, then it's like, here, have a sharp turn. Not to mention, if someone's near you when you go in the air, you're most likely screwed. I got fifth place on this. Not good at all. I got first place on the next track, putting me in first overall by three points. The second outdoor track was called the Gravel Pit. Right away, I found a cheesy strat where there was a bunch of huge jumps in a row, but you can just go along the side of them and skip them all. Then there was a ramp with a bar in front of it saying no bites. Every gamer will instantly recognize that the devs put a secret here. Except the bar was as solid as a brick wall and there was no secret. What the heck? But actually on the second lap that bar is removed. I noticed the AI taking the ramp so I went for it too. I wasn't even slightly close to making it. Man, the CPU's starting to use the shortcuts now. That makes it that much harder to win. I can't believe Jumpin' Jim Rivers made that. I managed to secure third on this one, which is decent for the outdoor courses. Somehow, though, I was still in first place by three points. I guess you can get lucky and no one really does well the entire circuit. I easily took first place on the final track and that was it. I had beaten the gold round, unlocking the pro difficulty. It also said I unlocked hill climb. Well, with that done, I had to conquer all those rounds on pro. I was a bit worried because I was really struggling on the outdoor courses and now the CPU was even better. I took second place on my first run on the first indoor track. This is a bad sign because usually I crush the indoor ones. Not to mention, this is one I've already played a bunch of times. Random, but here's a giant crash I had which is probably enjoyable to watch. I wish all the crashes were this brutal. I never even got first place once in this bronze round. Such a horrible performance. But I got first overall anyway, because everyone sucked apparently. Completely skill based, no luck whatsoever. One down. It took over 20 minutes of grinding that I finally got first place in a race on pro difficulty. Yeah, this was going to be tough. Man, I struggled a lot with the silver round. Like it felt like I couldn't do anything to counteract how well the computer was driving. Sometimes you get the most janky interactions ever with the other people too. Like what do you do about that? After around an hour I thankfully had done decent enough throughout the entire round to take first by just one point. Two down. The gold round was a struggle as well. Sarah Sugar Hill felt like my best rider. She had solid stats in everything but low turbo. I don't know what it was, but I was doing well on jumps with her. I also learned how to take turns a bit better on the indoor tracks. If you notice, the turns have a small hill of dirt lining them. Apparently these are called burns, and you can use them to accelerate out of a turn. I think the idea is you go downhill just as you leave the turn, which kind of gives you a burst of speed, uh, but that might not be accurate, but hey, it worked. I was finally doing well on the indoor tracks again. Oh yeah, in the gravel pit I found a new shortcut. Unfortunately, there was a train in the way, and uh, it didn't go so high. 
Hey, maybe Sergei was driving that. I didn't win on this attempt, but that's okay. This was actually the first time I finished a run out fully without winning. And the game has an amazing screen for when you don't get first place. It's just like, you lose. <laughs> like, wow, man, may as well just be like, hey, kid, you suck. Go return the game. It took nearly two hours, but I finally got first place on the gold round. My goodness. All that remained was the platinum round. This one had three outdoor tracks, unlike the others. The first was called Gold Mine Rush. Right away, there was a ramp that went over a building. Absolutely insane to do. Honestly, I really like this level. It had a lot of turns that weren't all that tight and so many huge jumps. But I had to be careful on some that I didn't jump a bit too high. The AI was struggling on this one too. Like, look, this guy just goes into a pit. Not even to mention how I somehow survived slamming into the rocks above. Then there was just a huge pileup of bikes in front of me. It was just pure chaos. The second outdoor track was called Construction Yard. I have no idea why we're racing here. It's so dangerous, what with all the rogue equipment laying around. There's also an insane amount of alternate routes in this one. I ended up driving through the sewer towards the end, and there's a lot of choices as to how you can proceed. You know, I was really impressed with the tracks in this final group. The final outdoor track is called Blizzard Blitz. As you might guess, there's snow everywhere. It doesn't affect your steering like you might expect, though. There wasn't all that much remarkable about this one, unfortunately. You know, other than the aesthetic of it. I was expecting this to be miserably hard, but I got lucky and none of the other racers did well. I tied with 13 points, but this time it said I did win. I'm not really sure why. Like, I tied earlier and it didn't work. What the heck? To my surprise, it said I unlocked a new round. Turns out the game wasn't done yet. I had now unlocked the challenge round. It said I needed to come in first in every single race to win. It was quite weird because it was all indoor tracks and there was only one lap. Along with that, the race was just a 1v1 rather than the usual six people. I thought I was in for a nightmare, but nope. I won the challenge round on my very first try. It showed the usual podium and it said I unlocked Excite Bike 3D. Then the credits played. Now, I had beaten the game by this point, but there's all those things I unlocked earlier. These are the special tracks, and they're just optional things to do with the bike in the game. There are six in total, with the first being the desert. This is just a seemingly infinite desert with tons of sand dunes. Scattered throughout are campfires, and those are the goal. You have to touch ten fires in total, and there's an arrow pointing you in the right direction. Basically, you're just constantly jumping. I'm not sure if it's just coded as a gigantic desert, or if the game is generating it as you play. It's kind of fun, but the chasing fires feels quite repetitive. I think it would be more fun to just mess around in there like an open world. The second special track is the stunt course. This is probably the most boring one. It's just a bunch of ramps and you're supposed to do tricks to gain points. I think they were trying to copy Tony Hawk here or something. I don't know, I feel like they could have just left the tricks out of this game. Special Course 3 is... literally Excite Bike. Like it's just an emulated version of the original NES game. Trust me when I say playing this feels so strange after playing the N64 version so long. Honestly, Excite Bike's a pretty fun game. Might consider checking it out if you used to play it back in the day. I think it still feels good. Okay, the fourth one might blow some of your all's minds. It's called Soccer, and it's a multiplayer game only. So tell me if this sounds familiar. You drive around on the bike and try to knock a giant soccer ball into the other team's goal. You know, there's some person out there who saw Rocket League blow up and was like, Hey, that was my idea. Oh, come on. And now they're thinking about what could have been. The fifth special course is Hill Climb. This is the most fun to me. It's just a challenge to drive the bike up an awkward mountain within the time limit. I feel like this is a bit of a stretch, but it kind of reminds me of the Trials games. I love Trials HD on the Xbox 360. You might think, wow, two minutes, that's not so bad. Well, if you crash, you go all the way back to your last checkpoint. Feels like I'm playing driving over it. Lots of people told me this was hard, but I beat it in like three tries, I think. It's a lot of fun to do though. And the final special course is called Excite Bike 3D. This is just the original Excite Bike game, but it's using the engine from Excite Bike 64. Now, this might be cool to watch, but it definitely feels rough to play. It's kind of a hybrid control of the original and the modern game. 
You can swap between controlling like the NES or the N64 by changing the camera perspective. I think it's cool they put this in. And finally, there is one more thing noteworthy in the game. It came with a track editor where you can make your own courses to show off to your friends. You know, if you have any. Uh, it's nice that this is in here, but I'm sure it was a lot cooler back in the day. It feels so primitive seeing it now, even compared to something like Tony Hawk 2's Park Editor. But yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Excite Bike 64. I had good memories of the original, so I was a bit excited coming into this. And I'd say it didn't really disappoint. The graphics are solid and the music, it's alright. I loved hearing the commentator scream about Choppa Jim Rivers over and over too. The controls are easy, but mastering them is quite difficult. When you do though, it feels so good to zoom through a course. Plus, all the bonus modes they included are just awesome, especially the hill climb. Nintendo's planning to put Excite Bike 64 on the Switch online, so maybe check it out if you have that. I'd say it's worth a play. I gave it an 8 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 5.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. 280 on the list. Lots of big name games left and lots of garbage as well. Let's see what we get. Three, two, one, go. 81. What is that? Oh, God. I, th <laughs> I think this might be a Japanese game. Uh, we're playing the next Flying Dragon game, which, uh, so there's a game called Flying Dragon, and then there's this Japanese title which is the sequel to it. So Flying Dragon might be in English, but the next one might not be. I, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.